What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Zana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we are playing a 2v2 match on the epic map Anorian in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 2.22. We pick random and we get to play the Mordor faction. Okay, Mordor, Gondor combination, pretty solid. Uh, one of our opponents was actually pre-picking the Isengard faction, which is, you know, Isengard is the best counter to Mordor's leadership in the mid to lead game with the Freezing Rain. And hopefully, we will be able to make stuff happen before our opening player is going to get the chance to unlock his Freezing Rain. So early on as Mordor, we always want to build up an Orc Pit. It, in a 1v1 and 2v2 situation, is very important because Orcs are for free. But also on top of that, from losing Orcs, we will actually be able to collect more and more power points, which is very important. And our goal earlier on is to keep those settlements protected. Because remember, we started with an orc pit inside the castle. That means our only resource income as we are talking are those lumber mill, you know, lumber mills outside of the castle. And keeping them alive is essential. Otherwise, we will be losing the game within like 2-3 minutes. And we know the Isengard. I mean, we know one of the opening players is Isengard. And he will... Oh, it's an isengard Gondor combination. And as you can see, they are moving straight to our lumber mills. I'm assuming they will be war chanting together, and that's going to be hard to defend. Hopefully, we will be able to build some slaughterhouses inside the castle before losing many of these lamry mills. And once we get to the mid to late game, it's going to be much, much easier, because Mordor's leadership later on with Drummer Troll, Witch King, Darkness, Eye of Sauron is going to be insane. And trust me on that one, I know many of you guys don't like Mordor for whatever reason, but Mordor's Mountain Trolls, with this much leadership, they will, be, they will become Hulks, okay? They will become literally the super villain of Middle-earth. He's using, I mean, my ally is actually using the Elven Wood to counter the War Chant. Remember, on the Elven Wood, from us, the enemy units will lose all their leadership bonuses. But the opening player is smart. You know, we can also pick up the Eye of Sauron and use it. And again, it's important to build some slaughterhouses inside the castle because we will at least end up losing two of these mills, which is going to be kind of painful. So our opening was using heal. And unfortunately for us, this mid is going down. They are still war chanted, even though we don't see that visually, because they were stepping on the wood. But the second they get away from the wood, they will once again regain their leadership bonuses from the war chant. And war chant is a much better buff in leadership than the Eye of Sauron, because Eye of Sauron gives us only damage and combat experience, but war chant gives also 50% increased armor. So luckily for us, we were able to get two slaughterhouses inside the castle. So even if we lose those settlements outside, we will not be out of the game. And what we can also do is we can try to creep. So we can now group all these orcs together and use one of these orcs to lure the orcs away from the lair. And we will just focus down the lair, not because of the experience or power points. I mean, power points are always great, but the main reason is to get a bit more money. You know, we need to fill up the bees extremely quickly to be uh, ready when the Isengard player is pushing forward. Because as you could see, in the beginning of the game, my, my ally was actually making a mistake. So he was trying to defend me, which is kind of impossible, because once again, a war is better. But he should, have he should have gone forward and tried to deal economical damage to Isengard instead. Oh no, these soldiers are level 2 too. I mean, we lost every single Lamry Mill outside. Uh, guys, let me tell you that much. That's not a good start into the game. <laughs> that actually is a quite bad start into the game. Uh, the good thing about this matchup for us is the Gondor Isengard combination is pretty solid and very strong, but they lack of something. And the something they lack of is the damage leadership. So they only have War Chant. And as, as far as I can see, this Isengard actually started with the Uruk pit. So he's recruiting Uruks. That means there is no Lords anytime soon. And even if he uh, if he recruits the Lords, the fighting Urukai, he will need to get him to level 5 first before unlocking his leadership, right? And the same also goes to Boromir. So Gondor Eisen, they will have trouble to unlock this additional damage, which is required to burst down the trolls fast enough. So I want to use Tainted Land right off the bat there on the spot. Because we know the opponent Gondor was starting with the heal, that means he has no chance of covering that. And we will have double land advantage, my ally and me. And that means we can abuse that. Remember, the lands are remaining on the field permanently until something covers it. So, I mean, it's not looking very good for us as we are talking. Because my ally also lost his own farm. 
So uh, the, the reason, by the way, why I took three settlements at the beginning of the game is because on the map Anorian, that's like a common thing. Mordor needs a lot of money. Mordor is a sport faction, but also a lead game carry at the same time. So in order to defend against Isengard, we need to recruit at bare minimum uh, four or five trolls and at least one or two drummer trolls. I personally like to always recruit two drummer trolls. And the reason for that is simple because they are also giving leadership to each other. Now, the damage leadership they receive from each other is kind of pointless because drummer trolls are no fighters, but they are sporters. But it's about the armor leadership they will receive. So this way, we have double great effects. One of them is they are harder to be taken down. And the better, even the better situation is, even if we lose one of them, they have still another one to keep the army with the insane leadership bonuses from the drummer troll. Come on! Okay, I mean, we are regaining map control as we are talking, that's not banned. My ally was also, luckily for us, uh, using his first Condonite to clear uh, those soldiers. And remember, the level up advantage is huge. It would take me lots of resources and also lots of units and orcs to deal with the level 2 soldier. But we are in a good spot. Uh, luckily, we were able to build a lot of slaughterhouses. That means we will eventually be able to recruit some trolls very, very soon. I don't know, though, how far ahead this Isengard is. I think he made a mistake. He went for the Uruk pit too early. You know, normally in this match, what you can do is you can build additional uh, furnaces at the beginning of the game and get to the power spike of because Isengard is an extremely fast faction and you want to abuse that. You want to actually uh, play around it, right? You don't want to give Mordor too much time because if you give Mordor too much time, he will be able to get the troll cage to level two, get drama trolls, mountain trolls. And once again, with only war chance, you will have a hard time to burst them down fast enough. That's the problem with the Isengard faction and Isengard Gondor combination. So orcs are one of the best and the cheapest counter to the pikemen. We can pressure them. We want to get to the point in which we can unlock the industry from the spell book very soon to get the money boost. So in addition to the four mountain trolls and the one drummer troll or two drummer trolls, we also want to get to the point in which we can uh, recruit the witch king, right? That's very important. Witch king is super underrated. He's the most expensive hero, but that's okay because he's worth it. He's worth every single penny. He gives an insane amount of damage and armor. He's like a walking war chance permanently. And for that reason, we will definitely need him to make our trolls tankier and also make them deal way more damage. Okay. So for now, we are losing those settlements outside, which is okay because now, when the first mountain troll is going to join the battlefield, we should be having a much easier time to defend our settlements. That's going to give us, again, incredible amount of resource income and we should be overall in a very good spot. Listen up. All right. Okay, more and more orcs are required. We have the first mountain troll. Let's send him to the settlement at the bottom side. And we can keep pressuring his pikemen all the time. So my ally is doing a good job. He's keeping the enemy busy. And we can try to help him a little bit with the orcs. Once again, you will you don't want to you know stop recruiting orcs in the entire game. You want to always keep recruiting more and more orcs. That's extremely important. Because now what's going to happen is I can just defend myself with the troll and use my orcs not only to put pressure but also once again as we are losing orcs we are gaining power points and we are only one power point away from the industry power spike that's going to be a massive power spike for oh he's running it down my ally oof 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 will he lose both the gondor knights hopefully not that would actually throw us back a lot and gondor has not enough eco right he has still zero settlements outside I mean, my ally is definitely not in a, in a good spot. <laughs> it's going to be a hard game, I'm assuming. Keep pressuring. I mean, I'm, I'm in a good spot myself. And I see this Isengard is not ready yet because he didn't even demolish the armor yet. So I think we should have time to at least recruit enough trolls to get the troll cage to level 2. That's our goal because the thing is, if we have no drummer troll, our trolls are going to be legit one-shotted by the enemy crossbowmen. They will be literally blown up. The trolls without leadership are very bad. And when we get leadership though, when we get Drummer Troll and Witch King, not even Easter Light of Gandalf or not even the Lightning Sword from Gandalf can kill them. It's a wild cave troll. We're almost finished with these. Oh, I thought this troll is gone. <laughs> My bad. Okay, so as you can see, 
Oh, no, he's annoying though. He's trampling down my Lambert Mill workers. We gotta recruit additional ones. Lambert Mills are very unique resource buildings. They don't give you any money if you have no workers. So you always want to make sure that you have for each Lambert Mill around about seven workers. Seven to eight, that's the magical number. Depends also on the map and depends also on how many trees are around those Lambert Mills, okay? So we are really close. Really, really close. Look, we are putting pressure with our orcs. And, you know, getting also a lot of vision control, right? So we need to now send this troll to deal with the Gondonite coming from the top side. He cannot rush us, really. You know, we have, like, too many trolls at this point. He will either need Witch King or uh, not Witch King. He will either need Gandalf or he will need assistance from his ally. But Isengard, I don't think he has enough money, though. I don't know why, but I don't, I don't think he has enough money. Because... The thing is about this Isengard, he's recruiting too many pikemen for my teeth. Pikemen are great against Gondor Knights and even, even against trolls. If you charge with the troll over the pikemen, you will receive a lot of revenge damage. But also they are expensive and they don't bring additional damage to the table. So you, what you want to do is you want to recruit more and more combos. Oh, nice sample from my ally. Very good, very good, very good. Come on now, we need a little bit more for the industry. Come on, please. A little bit more. Okay, I mean, our eco is looking good. And in, a, in, the, in the dream world, in an ideal situation, this Isengard will still give us some time in which we could eventually save up for the Witch King, right? That would be the dream. Because now we can start legit saving up for the Witch King. So I want to give also hold crown stance to the, to the drummer trolls because I don't want them to engage. Once again, the battle stances are extremely important now in the patch 2.22. And you need to play around them. You need to know, okay, which unit, which hero I need to use whole crown stance on. And which unit or which hero I can leave on the aggressive stance. For example, with the Witch King later on, we can also put a defensive stance. This way he won't automatically engage on the enemy combos and will get one-shotted. So, get used to it to play around the uh, battle stances. It can improve your gameplay quite a bit, you know? Okay. I think this orc might give us actually... Uh, there we go, we have industry now, beautiful, beautiful, nice. So let's use it right off the bat. That's going to be so helpful now to get the money to recruit Witch King. 8,000 is required for the leader of the nine, for the ruler of Minas Morgul. Let's use I to buff the Gondonites from our ally. He's level three though. Get the money. Oh, he lost all the money to <laughs> my ally, so unlucky this game. Look, our orcs though, they are putting so much pressure. We can now try to fight against those... Uh, okay, dude, on this land, by the way, we have additional armor, and from the eye, we also get additional damage, so this orcs, they have also the blood thirst now, which is reworked in the patch 2.22. Normally, in the original version of BFME 1, blood thirst was giving you the chance to eat your allied orcs to gain experience, which was kind of in useless in 99% of the cases. The only time you would use that is in a free-for-all game in which you have time to abuse this and eat orcs, orcs, orcs to get to level 5 and level 10, you know? But the orcs were kind of useless, that's why we reworked the Bloodthirsty. Now it's a level 2 passive ability, which will increase the damage output. Oh, my ally has actually archers. Which will increase the damage output from these orcs by 25%. Can I scout? No. Okay. So we have time. Dude, we have almost 7,000 in the bank already. That's awesome. And Isengard is coming now, but I believe by the time he is, he's reaching out to us, we should be able to get the Witch King recruited. Okay, so Witch King, Trolls, Drama Troll. And this is going to be... Uh, going to be a... But I can't even talk. This is going to be a demonstration about the power of Mordor, okay? I will show you guys what Mordor is capable of. Our, oh, our opponent has the Gandalf. Gandalf the right? So we gotta, we gotta watch out now. When you see Gandalf, you wanna kill back with the Trolls you have outside. You don't want to lose them. Because without drum, uh, without leadership, they will get one shot by the Easter Delight. And they are so expensive, they cost a thousand each. So losing them is quite painful. Okay, so we get the Witch King now. Oh my goodness. We have Trump. And we need, we are ready, right? The thing is, I don't want to push myself. Right? I want them to come to me. Because the problem with pushing yourself is, if you push and you lose, that's always a possibility, right? You lose the fight, you give your opponent such a great potential for a big counter push. And with this many Gondonites and Gandalf and Warchant, he might be able to take down our entire castle within a minute. No man can kill me. Okay. 
We are in a good spot. Let's get one more drama troll recruited. And my ally has also archers. So, trust me, the enemy doesn't realize. But the time is favoring us. So, my ally is getting stronger now. He will have plenty of Gonda archers with uh, fire upgrades. He will also have this insane amount of damage and armor leadership. And we should be able to outskill the Isengard. The only thing I'm scared and afraid of... Hold on a second. Are you sure about that? That's not gonna end well for you, my friend. Right, peel back, peel back, peel back. Okay. And as you can see, I'm giving different numbers to my trolls. I want to give them number one, two, three, four. Because the way you want to engage with the trolls is you don't want to click all of, on all of them and click on one target. No, you want to actually select the targets one by one. That's why we will select one to the one combo, the second to the second combo. So we can attack all of them, you know, at the same time. So the Witch King should be helpful. Hey, thank you so much for the follow on the Twitch channel, man. I appreciate that. Hope you're going to enjoy your stay. The Twitch, um, we are also streaming on Twitch, by the way, guys, if you don't know. So I would be extremely happy to see you guys also in the next Twitch live stream. If you are watching it over at YouTube, it's always a pleasure to meet you guys. Hordes and hordes of hordes. Oh, this <laughs> mountain troll is a mean one. Okay, so that is the army Worthy of Mordor, ladies and gentlemen. We have many, many trolls. Now, the, I want to also give them rocks. You know what I'm saying? You know, the reason why I want to give them rocks, and that's so beautiful now with the new with the new battle senses. I can give them rocks and put them on the whole crown stands. This way, they won't fire those rocks on a random target automatically, right? And the way, the reason I'm doing that is I want to actually aim on Gandalf. So the second Gandalf is casting his Easter Light, he won't be able to move for like a couple of seconds. And then if I have like four or five trolls with those rocks, I have Sauron, Beach King, and Drama Troll. Holy guacamole, we will blow up Gandalf in like two seconds. He won't, he won't have, he won't stand a chance. Trust me on that one. All right, so we are getting stronger and stronger. And Isengard is not moving. And Isengard is not moving. He's scared. He's scared. Dude, I'm fine with that. I'm really fine with that. You don't want to give Mordor too much time. Look at this army, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this troll army. Now it's about the time to troll our opponent. If you want to make sure to save Witch King always. Witch King is the most valuable unit slash hero in your Mordor faction. Okay, that's very important to always keep Witch King alive. Now you might say, yeah, but change. Even if I lose Witch King, he will be, you know, for free to revive. You are right, but you also need to think about time. So you might not invest any money into him, but you will have to wait like four minutes for him to come back, which is a really long time in RTS games. So losing Witch King is a no-no, right? Oh, oh. I. Okay, we need to cover this tainted land. Can we kill? Oh, he healed. The bubble. Oh, the bubble saved him, actually. Gandalf is going to be able to get away. Oh. <laughs> And actually, that's a bad situation for us. But to be honest, I am done waiting, boys. I'm done waiting. I want to actually go now. Because this Isengard doesn't plan to come to us anytime soon. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what he has. Hopefully, he has no Saruman. When he has Saruman, he might be able to steal all our trolls with the Warm Tongue. And we don't want that. Oh, that's the army in the middle. Okay. I'm actually down to that. I want to see this. Like, this army of trolls. Please let me know. Before you watch the next minute, and after you see what's going to happen, let me know now in the comments. Pause the video and type in the comment section down below. Who you think is going to win this fight? Our troll army? With the ranges and archers and Farami and Boromir? Or the enemy 5 to 6 combo battalions with Gandalf on their side? Let me know. Okay, so we have also 1, 2, 3... Four, five trolls with rocks. That's awesome. That should be enough. And we also made a change to the troll cage of Mordor. So the second troll cage is hitting level three. Every troll and also drummer troll coming out of it will be automatically level two. What we are trying to achieve with that is we want to reward the level three buildings, right? So you can always aim to get your buildings to level three. Okay, boys. So we have two drummer trolls. That should be enough. They have also the witch king leadership. Look at this. Holy mo- Let's go. Let's go. But this enemy army is looking also scary to me. What is this enemy army, my dude? Gandalf, many, many Gondonites. I mean, Gondonites are gonna do nothing against our trolls, but they can smash the allied archers. Because my ally has not even combos. He has straight up archers only. And we have Eye of Sauron on cooldown. But I wanna fight, dude. I wanna, I wanna really fight. 
Okay, let my ally shoot. The pikes are dying quick, qu you know, quite quickly, as you can see and tell. We can go now for another Nazgul for the map control. At the very same time, keep recruiting more and more orcs to put pressure. You wanna, you know, you wanna do more than one thing at the same time. Oh my goodness. Okay, Gandalf is coming, but he has no more land. He has no more land. He can't do anything here. Oh, can we kill him? He's get This is the problem of the rangers. They don't die, but they receive so much damage and they are knocked down on the ground. All right, let's run it down. Go, 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 go. Oh, one of the trolls is getting instantly taken down. Thank you so much for the follow on the mission. I appreciate that. All right, boom, boom, boom. Hey, please keep moving. Where are the other trolls at? My drummer trolls are getting knocked down on the ground. Which king has to be careful? Boromir is in level four. Lord has been taken down. Gandalf is still in a safe distance. This farm is actually annoying. Now we are coming. We are shooting on Gandalf, but he doesn't want to stop. And maybe it was a bad idea to give them rocks. I see a warning arrow. Doesn't hurt my trolls. One of my drama trolls is actually gone. We gotta be careful. Drama troll, don't die. Let's use Elf Sauron now. Um, warning arrow from my Farami, from uh, our ally Farami on the enemy Gandalf. Be careful, uh, drummer troll. We cannot lose him. He's smart to target my drummer trolls to deny me the leadership. I even see trebuchet coming. We have darkness now. Where Come on, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it. Darkness, boom. Darkness, yes. All right, our trolls should be in a good spot. The Gondorites are coming, but they shouldn't be able to achieve too much. We need now, you know, another army of trolls. We lost a lot of them, but we are not here to rest. We are not here to stop. What we're going to do now is we are going to attack Gondor and break his world because trolls are not only hitting like a truck against units, but also hitting like a truck against the walls, the towers, and the gate of the good factions. Go, go, trolls. And this guy has a trebuchet. I want to kill them with my witch king. Uh, oh, is there light? We should be still in a good spot. I think, you know, witch king is obviously much more resistant against spell damage in compared to a norm normal Nazgul. The normal Nazgul would be dead by now. We are breaking the towers first. Fly away, witch king, please don't die. I cannot afford to lose you. We will be definitely able to break one part of the wall. I don't think this is going to be the push to win, but I want to at least be able to take down the Siege Vortex. Let's take down the Siege Vortex, so that means no more any, no more trebuchet anytime soon. And also, the Siege Vortex wasn't even level 2 yet, so he won't be able to purchase the Firestone. This kind of is actually quite annoying. My ally has not enough units on the field. Okay, we need to bail, I think, uh, very soon with the trolls, because there are too many towers, and also Gandalf is still alive. So we need to be careful. Oh, we can mess up this combo, no problemo. I want to get away with this as soon as possible. If you are wondering why, why we get money, it's because of Boromir. Boromir was level 6, had the glory of Condor, and that means we have pillage uh, for killing enemy units. So we got a deal now. We have collected a lot of power points during this fight. We have 5 power points after the darkness already in the bank. So we need only 15 power points more for the, for the demon of the ancient world. The Baldrock of Morgoth, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, in the meantime, as you can see, right? We have taken down his settlement. That's so good for us. You know, we cut his supply. We cut his resource income. He has lost so many units. And re-recruiting those units is going to cost him so much time and money. So, we are in a good spot. We could go for a scavenger, but I don't want that. Because I'm a person, I want to get to the ultimate summon, which is the Balrog, as quickly as possible. I don't want to invest any more power points into anything else. And I don't know how close he is for the darkness. Oh, Gandalf is coming. Is he going to Easter Light? Hey, guys, watch this, please. Is he going to Easter Light one of my trolls? Look this. Look this. <laughs> Doesn't even kill him. I mean, he's a level 4 troll with Drummer plus Witch King. Good luck dealing with that, my friend. Good luck dealing with that. We need... Um, I have like three drummer trolls. It's a little bit overkill, but we want to make sure to, you know, protect those rangers. We are putting lots of pressure on him. Again, keep recruiting orcs all the time. Trust me, I believe in total, in this game, we gathered at bare minimum like three power points from losing orcs all along. So the, the longer the game goes on, the more beneficial losing orcs is going to become. Right, even Isengard getting power points from losing Uruks, heroes like Saruman and also uh, Lords. And that's the main reason if you are wondering why EOD summon is 10 power points and Balrog summon is 20 power points. That's the main reason because collecting power points for evil factions in long terms is much much easier than collecting power points for good factions like Gondor and Rohan. Okay, so we have 6 power points in the bank. I also run is available. Darkness is on cooldown, but we don't need darkness. That's also our Elvin Wood on the spot. It means we have even more armor. Farami is back on the menu, coming as the mounted. And we have also Boromir now joining the battlefield. And um, I want I want my ally to be a little bit more careful, you know? 
I mean, the rangers, that's the problem with them. They are so vulnerable against arrows. Because they are glass cannons. They are dealing insane amount. Hey, hey, he's coming. I will cover first if he puts land. He actually hurt Gandalf a lot. Boom. Gandalf is getting chunked. He lost 50% of his HP. And my Boromir is going to be important for my ally to give even more DPS to those rangers. So let's calculate that for a single second. I, I know you guys don't like that. But 50% from the Drummer Troll, 50% from the Witch King, and 50% of the Eye of Sauron. We don't even count Darkness because it's not available as we are talking. But alone, I am providing 150. Hey, I gotta cover this. Kill Gandalf. He's using heal. Okay, we gotta kill Gandalf. Okay, now we need to engage on the combos. Go, go, trolls. Go, 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 go. He has no freezing rain yet. Uh, we like we have seen four lands on the spot by the way so first gondor from the opponent has used the land i cover this then the isengard used the land then my ally cover this again so what a fiesta a uh, ranger summon from the opponent okay that's what it is my troll is running down oh be careful we gotta we, we gotta watch out again keep those drama trolls always next to the rangers that's very important the trolls are diving in, we get money. He's using the lightning sword, but it shouldn't be too effective. I want to actually kill this witch Gandalf. Let go. Witch King and an Asgul. This Gandalf already disturbed us with his shenanigans. He has no more heal. Remember, he used to heal. Now we have darkness back on the menu. So we provide now 133% more damage with our heroes and spells and drama troll. And Boromir gives additional 60%. So they have round about 200%. Oh, Gandalf is no more, but I lost my Witch King. You know what? I take it every single day of the week. Losing any hero for enemy Gandalf is worth it. Even the Witch King, you know? Because, again, we can revive the Witch King for free, but he needs to invest a lot of money for that. And he has only one single farm outside. So trust me on that one, he has not a really great eco as we are talking. And we are only 9 power points away from the mighty Balrog special summon. Oh, he's summoning Ohirim. That's what it is. Hey, I can use Screech. I'm coming. But it, uh, let's use one of the drama trolls to knock them on the ground. The other ones, uh, you do, you want to make sure. And by the way, that's important to understand. If your drama troll is fighting, he won't give you leadership. So you want to make sure that he's not fighting. That's why we have two of them in the hot ground stands. This way, they don't fight at all. And one of them is able to knock them down on the ground. Okay, so dude, what an intense game now. Uh, okay, we have another army of trolls coming. And there is Saruman. What can Saruman do against such a reckless hit? We have so much leadership as we are talking. He's stealing my allies who hear him special summon. What a man, man. <laughs> I can use Screech here, right? I should be able to use Screech. There we go. Screech and get away. Oh, Saruman is no more. Too much DPS. Level 10 rangers. You know what's up. Boromir. Oh, okay. That's the counter moment. You see, it's raining now. And, and all our leadership is negated. So we gotta watch out now. I wanna actually go with the trolls. Because if you don't know, every unit you recruit after the rain has been used will have leadership again. But every unit which is on the field as the rain is getting used will lose their leadership bonuses for 3 minutes. Let's take down the Orphank. I mean, our trolls are dying so fast. The troll structural damage isn't the greatest, especially when they have no leadership bonuses. But it's okay. The trolls are so good against anything else. Look how many drama trolls we have. Dude, guys, are you ready for the drama drama party? Our Nazgûls are also receiving so much damage. There is no reason of using I, by the way, because we can't get leadership. Since Rain is still active. My ally is taking too much damage. I think we need to build now. We need to build now. I don't want him to lose all these archers, though. Because we need to build. He's using heal. Oh, he used also heal on my Nazgûls. Very nice, very nice. Okay, I can keep doing now. And we are 8 power points only away from getting the Balrog special summon available. And then we can summon the Balrog to destroy the enemy castle. You know, you can't... If the building stable and, you know, workshop or archer range is level 3, you can't one-shot them anymore. But what you can do with Mordor is, as you use Balrog, you can also send in all your Nazgûs to finish the job, you know, and then take down the castle. So, and also the question of the day, guys. What do you think in Battle for Middle Earth 1? Which is a stronger summon? EUD, Army of the Dead, or the Balrog summon? That's a question to you guys. Let me know your opinion and also tell me why you think that. You know, don't tell me only EOD, but tell me why you think EOD or Balrog is better than the other spell. I personally would say Balrog is better because Balrog is not only able to kill the full castle by himself, but also to wipe out a full army, right? The enemy is on us! Okay, so, and also in the patch 2.2, we nerfed the damage of AOD special summon against buildings. That was, like, quite busted, because AOD 
is intended to be like an army killing ability, but it was also <laughs> very strong against structures. So we nerfed the structural damage now uh, from the off breakers against the enemy structures. So now you can still wipe out heroes and armies, but you won't be able to deal too much damage anymore to the structures. So we are only seven and a half power points away. Gonna from him is back on the menu, boys. Our Witch King isn't back yet because Witch King is the longest revive time. Oh, Gandalf, what is Gandalf doing? Let's use this. What is Gandalf doing? Okay, let's go, last ghouls. It's your time to shine. You even use heal. <laughs> All right. I mean, we have um, leadership almost back on the menu, boys. The, the, the thing, it, the way it works is if you step on the enemy land and then you step back again, you will receive leadership even if the rain was used very recently, if this makes sense. Lord is getting literally one-shotted. He has no chance. And you can see, lacking of damage leadership is a proof that in this matchup as Isengard, you want to start with Lords. And you want to try your best to get him to level 5. Trust me, in the very big fight in the middle of the map, if he would have Lords leadership level 5, he would have been having much easier time to deal with the trolls. What is Gandalf doing? Gandalf, Gandalf! Oh, Gandalf is no more. <laughs> I mean, there is just too much, too much DPS. Also, my ally has his own Gandalf, on the, uh, Gandalf to ride on the field. We are smashing everything on the ground. And Isengard is falling into pieces. Let's use darkness because I don't like a raining day. I like it dark. All right. So five power points only from the Balrog specials. I mean, we have three flying heroes. No man can kill me. Feast on his flesh. Look at them flying, one shotting the tower with you know each hit from all the three Nazgûls to collect the power points we need. Look, the Uruks are back on the menu, boys, but the question is for how long? Dude, one of my Nazgûls is actually taking so much damage. Holy moly, he's gonna die. He's gonna die. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. We have another one and we have the Witch King. Witch King is the one who needs to be kept alive. The normal Nazgûl, don't get me wrong, is also important, but it's not that important, right? Especially not when we are winning right, right now. We have the Momentum in Isengard Castle. The Orphan has been destroyed twice. And Mordor Gondor combination, ladies and gentlemen, is going to the victory. And yeah, I I heard that you guys like this team games 2v2s, 3v3s, 4v4s. I will try my best to organize as many games as possible for you guys. So if you don't want to miss any of these future uploads, please make sure to be subscribed to the channel. We are really close for the 18,000. It would be amazing if we can eight, if we can get 18,000 subscribers. It would really mean a lot to me. And also, once again, we are streaming every second day, Mondays, Sundays, Wednesdays, on Twitch, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link is in the description down below. And I would love to meet you also in the next live stream. Because if you don't know, we have currently a $1,300 tournament going on for BFME 2, The Rise of the Witch King. And we are still in the group stage. And we have a phenomenal amount of games. And I would, again, I think you, you would not want to miss that. So now let's go for the Gondor Castle. Let's finish off this game. Let's, you know, as, as Saruman the White would like to see. Against the power of Gondor. I mean Mordor, sorry. <laughs> there can be no victory. And imagine for a single second what would have happened in the films if Mordor and Gondor would be united. Now, we have two eagles, two Nazgûls. Look at this new flying animation from the Witch King too. And Mel Gibson has been defeated. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. i see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Hit like a truck. And also, stay beyond standards. Peace out.